Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to, to this uh, talk about the game-changing graph application platform. My name is Axel Markner. I'm, I'm the founder and of the small company we founded um, about four years ago, which is behind this project. Um, yeah, the game-changing graph application platform is obviously structure itself. Um, and I'm living and working in, in Frankfurt am Main in Germany. Uh, this is where we're based. And this is about my 14th talk, conference talk about structure. Uh, starting, I think, 2011 at NoSQL Matters in Cologne, at GraphConnect San Francisco, the first GraphConnect in 2012. Go to conferences in Berlin, two years ago in London, of course, and some other conferences. And uh, I always uh, talked about structure as a system, a technical platform, and did some demos. And this time will be completely different because I won't show any demos. Um, you, can, you can go to, the, to our stand outside uh, because we, for the first time we are sponsoring a Graph Connect. The, 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 the conference we attended um, participated um, uh, very often um, and this is a very special day for us and special event and um, really a milestone for us to be here in, in London for Graph Connect and I'm really thankful to, um, that it was possible. And yeah, as I said, um, completely different, but um, let's have a look what structure is because some, some of you uh, won't uh, know about it. We, we call it now a off-the-shelf, full-stack application platform. So what does that mean? That means that off-the-shelf, it's, it's a system you can just install um, and run like the Neo4j server itself, uh, um, very similar technology. Um, and full-stack means that you don't need anything else to create um, web or mobile applications, or let's say, to be fair, the first 80% uh, of um, maybe any possible project. So uh, it has four areas of functionality. You can use it as a rapid application development system or, or um, environment. You can define a custom schema with your own data types and properties and relational, uh, re relations with a visual schema editor. This will just automatically configure uh, a RESTful JSON backend, which can then uh, serve as a uh, backend for mobile applications or web applications. Um, you can also serve all the necessary web resources like pages, files, um, um, images out of the same system. So it has a content management uh, uh, system integrated. This is what we, what we initially, what our initial idea was to create a content management system uh, and then uh, a graph database was the perfect database or persistence uh, uh, layer for, for this kind of um, application. And last but not least, um, a graph editor and visualization tool. And uh, the graph editor, the visual graph editor is very, uh, very new functionality. We just are about to build that into our product that gives you the, the option to edit your graph um, like you would edit um, or just, just in a visual way. So just moving around nodes and it's a proxim proximity based approach. So that if you move one node closer to the other and in the schema you have a possible relation or relationship between those uh, two types, then the relationships just uh, uh, snap in and you can just connect the nodes. Um, very um, funny way to, to edit graphs. So what can you use it for? So, some random, four random use cases uh, of uh, real world projects we're doing. Uh, we, for example, we, we build a recommendation engine for a large retail shop in Germany selling toys uh, for kids. And um, it's used as an internal internet communication platform, universal commu uh, messaging exchange for a large governmental um, customer, public sector. It's used in um, many projects as a mobile um, application backend. Um, and last but not least, a use case here built for uh, one of the gold sponsors here for Trifog. Um, it's called Speaker Brain. It's a conference management system which uh, is used internally um, for managing all the conferences, speakers, sessions, tracks, the votes the uh, 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 Trifog gets from, from all these attendees. 
and it's based on Neo4j and structure. So these are just four use cases to, to illustrate what you can, or to show what you can do with that. Um, <clears throat> we made the first steps uh, with Neo4j 1.0 in, back in 2010. February 2010 was the first uh, line of code written. The first public release, because all is open source, was in uh, May 2011, uh, version 0.3. And uh, last year in September, we released the first stable general availability uh, milestone of version. And uh, this is where this peak uh, comes from. You see the, 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 the number of um, users accessing our, our website is uh, um, increasing over time. And this peak, particular peak, was in that month. It was a, quite a success, but from a technical perspective, it was more or less a um, uh, disappointment because we thought that we could get some some stress testing out of it, but um, it didn't even show a, a real peak in in CPU utilization. So structure can can happily will happily serve thousands of requests uh, per second. So it's a very efficient content management. Just by the way, <clears throat> today we we are working on version 1.1, which will be released this summer. Um, we are a small but, but growing company. We are hiring. So, by the way, if uh, uh, you know or you are uh, some um, uh, front-end or back-end developer, just contact us uh, at our stand. Uh, currently, we uh, get about 2,000 uh, returning visitors per month on our website, which is not that uh, large number, but for just such a small uh, company or product, um, we're, we're quite uh, happy with that. So we got some very interesting feedback um, uh, I'd like to share with you. John, for, for example, this changing the schema at runtime, that's dangerous, you're crazy. So, yes, we know. Um, or that will never work. Simply, yeah, of course. Or maybe it will work. Or that, oh, that would totally change the way I do my work. Yes, yes, that's intended. That's intended. We want to do the change. We want to do. Uh, we want to change the way people work uh, developing software. And um, these three statements uh, were basically uh, um, said by developers and developers in Germany. So it's a kind of a conservative um, environment sometimes. But um, we also get got other feedback like. This is great. I was just looking at building a conceptually similar backend on Neo4j. You guys have saved me months of work. Um, or this is groundbreaking. Or a game changer. And this is the reason why I just named this talk the game changing graph application platform. It's just feedback from, from, uh, from a user. It's a bold statement. Um, game changing graph, because um, you know, changing the game is something big. Uh, but imagine if we would be in Silicon Valley, I would probably have named this talk the Disruptive Graph Application Platform. But when I hear disruption or dis disruptive, I, I think about this. And, and this is not the message uh, we want to convey. Uh, so what's there to change? I mean, Neo4j is already great. It's a great platform. It's a great database, great eco ecosystem. Uh, you all in the room know uh, that it it is great because otherwise you wouldn't be here. It is intuitive. It is uh, intuitive in a way that um, it is what we call whiteboard friendly. You can just start writing your data model, your domain model on, on a whiteboard and transfer that into your database. So it's very, very easy and very um, easy to comprehend and to understand. It's also fast because you're doing the, the, the joins at insert time and not at run time. So it gives you a very, very quick, uh, or very, very uh, good performance when, when uh, querying the database. And it's also very flexible because it does not enforce a strong schema. Um, and this is, th that turned out in our real world projects to be the most important uh, uh, property of, uh, of a graph database, Neo4j, to be flexible. Let me just, uh, or let's just imagine a real world project. And a real world project has real world customers. So a real world customer, or real world project starts with an in initial idea or brief and briefing. So let's imagine the customer wants to have a car. 
so everyone can build cars, no problem. We make an offer building, for building a car, and of course we, we love our job, we, bu we build a car, we deliver a car, we deliver a special car. It has some nice features, very environmental f environmentally friendly, and it's a fast car. And the customer is very happy, and after the first milestone, things, okay, they can build a car, maybe they can also build a plane, because, I mean, we are in the project and we're spending a lot of money, so the customer change, changes the requirements a little bit, and okay, you say, we'll build a plane, okay, we can, do, we, can, we can build a plane. So you build a plane, a great plane, big plane, fast, and um, many seats, but maybe the plane was a little bit too big, so in the next uh, project phase, the budget is consumed. So the customer says, okay, I understand, we can only make small steps, so a small plane is, is okay, or the, I'm, I'm happy with this plane, but that's just one tiny little requirement. Could this plane um, perhaps fly into space? So, okay, and there you are as a developer. So it's a typical, typical situation. Um, over the lifetime of the project, the requirements still <coughs> change very much, and they increase over time. And, uh, but finally, you, you give up and say, OK, let's build a space shuttle. It can pl fly into space, and it's uh, even reusable. Um, but that's not the end of the story, because after a certain time in the project, the customer has learned about the possibilities of the technology. And now what, what, what they really want, what they finally want, is the death star of applications. So what do you do? I mean, that's uh, difficult to handle. It's difficult to handle if you don't have a flexible platform, a flexible system, and this is the solution. And we all know from our days when we were young, or even, even, even today, we need a system where you can just where you have pieces you can, you can put together to build uh, um, anything. And, and this is an analogy, of course, it is limited. We're not doing toy projects. We're doing real world projects that, that are in production since four years. Um, but it, 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 it illustrates what structure wants to be or is. It's, it's a, a very flexible toolkit and even kits could be or should be able to uh, use it to build something. Um, so flexibility, what does it mean? It, it means that we can make the round trip for change requests much shorter than in traditional ways of uh, software development. So we can, instead of days or weeks, um, process change requests in minutes or hours. We get instant feedback on modifications. Uh, one other secret behind that is that, that the whole system or the whole development project is manageable by a single person. So that, that reduces uh, communication uh, between different or large project team. You can adapt that, uh, most solutions, to many other use cases. You can reuse things, and it's a very open and highly integ integratable, so you can interact with different things. Um, and it saves you time and money, and we can, our experience in our projects done by, by, by us, of course, we, we know the product very well, that we can cut development and maintenance costs uh, in half, at least. So that gives us uh, the, 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 uh, the, the power to, to do more projects in the same time. Um, and for software, that, that's, um, that means that it's very easy to use. I mean, even non-developers can build applications on their own. Um, in most of uh, the projects, we don't really need developer skills. Of course, it helps to understand, but we have many users which are non-developers, like business analysts or people who are able to use content management systems or something, they are able to create applications with structure. And you can skip the driver or language selection process, and you can very quickly ramp up and, and set up your project. And you, is that really already game-changing? Is that, is that enough to say, this is a game-changing application platform? So, depends. I mean, we are not in Silicon Valley, then say, okay, the, the talk ends here. We're, we're a little bit more modest, or not modest. We, 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 we have some, some, some more, more bigger thing in mind, because let's, let's, let's do some numbers. We have 7.2 billion people on planet Earth. We have about three or three billion people have access to internet or technolo technology 
and education uh, to use the internet. Um, could be more, of course, but um, yeah, that's the number. And guess how many developers, software developers are, are in the world, worldwide? Just rough number. What do you think? 10 million? Yeah. So the IDC says there are about 18.5 million software developers uh, worldwide. That's less than 1% um, of the people who, are, who can access the internet or have access to this technology. And, um, uh, and thereof, there are, I don't know if you can, 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 can distinguish or see it, thereof, that, that's a Stack Overflow except, except from the Stack Overflow Developer Survey 2015. Thereof, um, we have um, about 32% are full stack web developers, but only 10% are, are back end developers. And uh, enterprise level service developers are just uh, about 3%. So just a fraction of them are able to um, create um, applications based on, on, I mean, any database. So this is what we want to change with structure. So you have this, this small fraction of people with developer skills, but these people can use browsers and apps or, or have uh, 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 skills with uh, office tools and so on. So, or they can use an, a content management system or they can use, use Facebook. They can log in somewhere, edit some things, and if the user interface is, is good enough, they can, can use these tools. And we have that many people who are born creative, because each child is born creative. I mean, every one of you who has uh, uh, kids knows that. So this is what we want to change with structure long term. And um, I know it's, it's, it's a big task. Um, so we start small. We start um, in our own uh, community and family. And so my, my um, uh, criterion for success is, or are my own kids. So this is my, my six-year-old daughter. She's using the new graph editor in Structure, and she can uh, create and manage and edit graphs. She's using a database. She's, she, she, she literally created our family graphs, just um, um, herself, her brother, her parents, grandparents, and started edit, edit, to, to add friends and so on. And the next step is to teach her how to create a web application or a mobile application. I mean, her older brother is nine years old. Uh, he can help her. So this is what we want to change. We want to make technology much more accessible um, to people who are not necessarily developers. So to just close this gap between the graph technology and graph databases, which are really good model to, or good, good, good uh, things to, to, to model your domain and to create applications for people who want to do that. Okay, thank you, that's all.